this is Tapas Relia. Uh, today I'm going to be sharing thoughts about my life, my music, my studio, my equipment, my gear, and something about me. Hope you enjoy. My dad used to learn singing in the house. Uh, Guruji used to come regularly and teach him uh, singing, Hindustani vocal. So I would see him learning music in front of my own eyes as a kid. Maybe that left a very indelible mark on my mind in my subconscious and uh, I really took to music and uh, um, I loved listening to music uh, at, as, at a small age. I remember my dad had also gifted me uh, a Walkman. He was, since he was learning Hindustani, he was interested in electronics also. He, he got a keyboard, so there was always a keyboard in the house uh, and I used to play on that. And it gradually evolved, evolved. I never let that fire die, just evolved over a period of time and by the time I reached my 12th standard I was very sure that this is what I want to do because I was actively participating in music competitions, inter school competitions, the school band, anything got to do with music the school knew that who you need to go to. So that's how uh, it evolved, it developed and it's really set in you know, and that this is really what I want to do and I was really pathetic at studies so there was really no option for me and uh, was not interested in my dad's business so that's how the decision was taken and uh, hats off to my parents who, who finally agreed that okay you can you know try pursue a career in music they agreed to put me up in Bombay and uh, it's been 15 years now complaints so how old were you when you moved to Bombay I was 17 when I moved to Bombay um, <coughs> um, with nothing but just hope and dreams and you had no contacts in the industry None no. whatsoever. None. None. I had never seen a recording studio in my life. I didn't know how his work supposed to be caught. Uh, let alone industry, I did not know anyone. I have always grown up in Ahmedabad. There was no connection in Bombay. The only cities I had been to was Ahmedabad and Surat. That's it. So, this is actually a little remarkable because not having known anything about the business as such, not even having experience recording in a studio, maybe not even having seen a studio like you said. Yeah. What was your initial struggle period as we call it? As initial struggle period was uh, quite daunting because I didn't have the pressure of earning money or running a house. Uh, I wasn't married, uh, I didn't have to run a house and all of that. But the pressure was of living up to the expectations of your family. You know, uh, my parents had put in a lot of hope in me. And I would just say one thing about my struggle, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's just the hunger inside you that makes you go ahead and you just take life as it comes to you without uh, planning anything, expecting anything. I remember all I, all I used to do in Bombay when I shifted was go to my piano classes, two hours every day, no other activity, no other activity. The rest of the time I just listened to music. I didn't even know to pick up the phone and call who. I didn't even know where is the music industry in Bombay? I didn't even know what is Andheri, what is Juhu, had no clue. Things just started moving slowly, slowly. I really believe it's it's the hunger inside me which really drove me to where I am and, and how, how I landed up doing work finally. At any point in life during these days, did you even get a thought once that let me go back to my father's business which is set up, no, established? never, not even for one moment, not even for one moment. I'll tell you the reason for that. Um, as I said, I had never seen Bombay City. Uh, Bombay to me was the quintessential city that can only be seen in magazines and television and uh, you have this, this, this image of a city which is untouchable. So when I landed, when I arrived in Bombay, I remember I had come through Gujarat Mail and I, I, I walked out of Bombay Central at 6 in the morning with my dad. The first thing that hit me was the air around me, the smell of a metro, the smell of a cosmopolitan city where dreams come true. I was, I fell in love with Mumbai. I totally fell in love with Mumbai. That's, it's that very reason that I never thought about going back to Ahmedabad. That was the first love and yes, the hunger was always there to, to make a career in music. So these two things put together, no chance of me going back to Ahmedabad, no chance. Uh, it's, everything is hooked up to this machine. This is where I, uh, uh, I make most of my music, 99% uh, of my music, whether it's movies or songs, AVs, all big projects happen over here. This is my den and this is the heart of the den. Uh, 
the iPad is, uh, yes, it's a toy for a lot of people, but for me it is seriously connected to logic. I use logic to compose music and it is connected to logic and I use one software, one application to uh, to do things with logic. So it is always right there and it's connected by Wi-Fi. Over here, the iMac is my media server in the home. My whole family is uh, Apple iOS device users, so it's it's connected to a one terabyte hard disk and it's got 600 to 700 GB of iTunes library. Uh, this is always on. I can access my iTunes library from anywhere in the world, from any room um, in the house, and I can stream it to any room I want. I can play music wirelessly. This is also my internet machine, my mail mas machine, my business machine. Uh, and finally, the MacBook Pro. Uh, I had to invest in a MacBook Pro because of my advertising, uh, advertising jobs. So, since advertising doesn't happen in the studio, we need to go out for recordings in the proper commercial advertising space studios. Um, so it, it really doesn't make sense for me to cart the whole Mac Pro around with a 13 cinema display. So MacBook Pro made sense. I do all my advertising work on my MacBook Pro. Right. Knowing that you own so many Apple products, you must be getting a lot of calls and emails and uh, must be working like a part-time Apple employee helping friends and family yeah that is that is that is true it's but I love doing that what what happened is I was a PC user yes I was a PC user when I was working on Hanuman but uh, it, it dawned on me that PC is really not uh, the Windows operating system is really not forgiving for people like us it, it really takes a lot from you so I shifted to a Mac but when I shifted to a Mac what I uh, I didn't know anything. I'm not a com I was not a computer literate person. I used to hate computers. So when I got the Mac, I was I remember I we had gone together and bought my first iMac. So uh, I remember I was very frustrated with that purchase. I was not happy because I did not understand anything about a Mac. Then I just pushed myself, forced myself to at least make the investment worth it. I learned myself. I totally dived into it and. I ended up being a pro. I, I could not help it. It's again, it's that hunger inside you. You want to solve your own problems, and you want to, you want to be the master of your machine, not the other way around. Yeah, so Raman had once said that right. technology is like a monster. If you don't tame it, it'll go out of control. Right. So I like to tame my machines. I know them inside out. So how many hours a day, or? How much time do you dedicate in a week to studying the new technology? It's a, uh, there's nothing fixed. If I'm, I know one thing for sure that after I'm done with work, I, I, if I'm working on a film or a project or a song, I cannot creatively work beyond 10 hours or 11 hours. I have to stop. And my escape is not reading a book or going to bed. My escape are only two. Either watch a movie or sit on the net and study about technology, read about technology, or, or, or install some few applications, play around with them. Uh, uh, th this, this is really what really relaxes me. All right, so this is my session in Logic. I'm working on that theme song. I've just temporarily named it Arman, and uh, this is uh, my iPad that's connected to Logic uh, via Wi-Fi. Um, I've just loaded an ambient guitar track, and I'm going to be playing a rough lead over that section because that's what I was working on. this part but I want to automate the volume of it so I'm going to be using my iPad to do that I'm going to put the track into latch mode and I'm going to automate it in real time
That's how you do it. Thanks, Tapas, for showing us around your studio. It was totally my pleasure. And uh, telling us how you kind of approach work, how you've used technology in your life, etc. Um, your recent film mode. Yeah. There's a melodious track called Tu Hi Tu. Yeah, that's right. Uh, could you just play it for our viewers? You, I, I see a guitar here, so <laughs> or whatever you can play, please. I am not much of a guitar player, but I'll try. I use the guitar just to uh, get a different compositional inspiration. Right. When right. the keyboard doesn't do the trick, I just take the guitar and s just drop down on my couch and I just strum. So, yeah, I'll try. And this song is Tuhitu. It's uh, originally been sung by Shivam Pathak and uh, Shreya Goshal. Uh, immensely talented singer Shivam is. I'll try to match him. Let's see how it goes. क्यों है फिजा अब इतनी मेहरबान अब आरज़ू होने लगी है रवान मैं कहे फिर क्यों ये गुल सिखा चमका है क्यों अब ये कह कशां कदमों में जहां है चौखट आसमा है प्यार में तेरे हर सू तू ही तू है तू ही तू ही तू हर पल तू ही तू है तू ही तू ही तू हर दम तू ही तू है तू ही Thank you very much. Not at all. My pleasure.